Well, let's move on now. In Cape Town, President Cyril Ramaphosa is joining Health Minister Dr. Joe Pachla at the launch of the Nant Africa Medical Facility. It will aim to accelerate domestic production of pharmaceuticals, biologics and next generation vaccines for the benefit of the whole continent. Well, Nant Africa is the new initiative of South African-born billionaire Dr. Patrick Sunshon and partners with leading local medical researchers and universities. We go to Lindsay Dentlinger now, who is at the launch. Lindsay, uh, you are waiting for the delegation to arrive. Uh, what exactly is Nant Africa and the new facility going to produce? So, Annika, the president, as we understand, is um, currently uh, with uh, Patrick Shunsheng in uh, Stellen at Stellenbosch University, where he's donating biometric uh, sequences this morning that just forms part of this massive initiative to produce uh, not only COVID-19 uh, vaccines, um, but a range of other pharmaceuticals. As you point out, um, the uh, Patrick Shunsheng is really known for his work in cancer, uh, and so he is wanting to use use uh, that knowledge uh, to produce a new COVID-19 vaccine. He is of the opinion and he says he has the research to back this up that uh, vaccines which only target an antibody uh, response is not enough. He believes uh, we should also be building a T cell uh, response and building from his uh, cancer research. And so Annika, the intention is to convert this facility where I'm standing at the moment uh, about 30 kilometers from the heart of Cape Town, uh, this massive, massive warehouse to convert this into uh, a pharmaceutical uh, hub that uh, aims to produce uh, around a billion vaccines, COVID-19 vaccines by 2025. So that is quite a mammoth task. And of course, uh, the aim is to um, help uh, improve the distribution and the access two vaccines, not only for South Africa, but obviously for the rest of the continent. Lindsay, I mean, it's no surprise really that Dr. Sunshong has chosen South Africa. He was born here, uh, he went to Wits University, and he pioneered uh, a cancer-avoiding uh, drug, which, uh, Abrexas, which uh, really did sort of a Brexan, which made him uh, very wealthy, but also helped a lot of people. What does this mean for job creation in SA? Yes, Annika, he's probably not um, the name that an ordinary South African automatically thinks of when we think of our billionaire export uh, South Africans who have gone on to do great things uh, outside of this uh, country. But uh, you've spoken to him uh, a few months back, and uh, in terms of job creation, he uh, says that uh, he he's, was always his intention, even though he's lived in the United States for many years, to plow back uh, into South Africa and into the African continent and to uplift people here. Uh, we don't uh, have at this time uh, the kind of figures as to exactly how many uh, jobs uh, will be created here, but you can imagine that it is going to obviously give the South African medical fraternity and those who work uh, in the innovation uh, of these kinds of pharmaceuticals uh, an opportunity to be really at the forefront of leading medical technology. We know that there are already approvals given by South African health authorities for this vaccine to be produced here and to be part of trials uh, and so really it puts uh, South African uh, medical technologists and, and, pharma, um, and, and pharmacists and the like really at the forefront uh, of being part of pioneering uh, uh, medical technology. Uh, but we hope to learn more about those and to answer your questions a little bit later this morning uh, when we'll have South African medical experts uh, also on hand to speak about how this facility is going to be contributing uh, to putting uh, South Africa and the continent uh, on the map in terms of the development of these vaccines and of, the, of course other, uh, um, other medications, other biologicals and pharmaceuticals. Yeah, it'll be interesting, Lindsay, to get actual deliverables and to see whether South Africans will benefit from uh, vaccines that are going to be far less expensive than ones that are produced uh, in other countries. Uh, but also, I think, I, I don't know about you, but I didn't know we had this plethora of brilliant uh, medical experts in the virology uh, sector 
until COVID, and, and I should have really, because we really led the way uh, in the fight against HIV with, for instance, uh, Linda Gale Becker uh, and Glenda Gray. So it's also a celebration, I think, uh, of our incredible medical expertise that's really shining around the world right now. And it also goes to show, Annika, the fact that um, Dr. Patrick Xuanzang is um, donating these um, biometric sequences to Stellenbosch University obviously also shows uh, how much faith he has uh, in our medical schools. As you pointed out, he trained here. He became a doctor here um, uh, many, many years ago. Uh, and so it really goes to show, and I think uh, we, uh, we are saw with the, the unfortunate backlash uh, surrounding the discovery of the Omicron variant, uh, what that meant for South Africa, but really what really should have been celebrated is, as what you're pointing out, uh, how brilliant our scientists and our um, uh, medical fraternity really are. As you say, they've been at the forefront of uh, tuberculosis and HIV uh, treatment for many, many years. So really, uh, we, uh, it goes without saying that they were going to excel at this as well. And so Stellenbosch University partnering with this venue uh, here, which is still to be developed uh, into this um, a pharmaceutical hub. Uh, th th I mean, that just goes to show uh, how that partnership and, and what and brilliance uh, it already comes from our medical schools and our, um, our top scientists uh, in terms of um, placing that faith in them really uh, to be this hub on the continent. All right, Lindsay Dentling, our senior reporter there who will be following this uh, story for us throughout the day.